Psalm 101.3, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. So, um, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Lord, you've given a word. Jesus, it's your word. I thank you for the privilege to deliver your meat to your servants in due season. Lord, I give it to you. Use this frail, faltering tent to shine your glory. God, animate my body through your Holy Spirit. Jesus, let your face shine through me because I don't know what to do outside of you. I could just speak and it'd be babble. If I have not love, I have a banging gong or a cymbal. And now if I have all knowledge just to move mountains but have not love, I gain nothing. Oh God, shine your love through me, your words through me, so that we will be like the bride who eyes not her garment but her dear bridegroom's face. In Jesus' name. God of God's people say, Amen. 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 What are you waiting for? Or you can even say, what are you hoping for? Or you could call this, where are your eyes? Let me paint a little picture. In the Old Testament, all the references, or shall I say like a compass, everything was in reference of not north, south, or actually, that's north. North, south, east, west. East. east. Everything is east. East was the frame of reference. The word kedem, or kadam, or where you get the word kadima in Hebrew, which is go, charge, military charge. Kedma is where you get the word kedma, which literally means antiquity. How... Interesting, where Kadima go forward is like backwards. Kedma, go forward to antiquity. I love Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Gene Wilder, not Johnny Depp. He said, oh, we can't go backwards. He spoke a truth. He prophesied. You got to go forward to go back. There's a picture there. Jesus came. Now, the mission is to go so forward, you're actually back to where? Let's see if uh, you guys can answer that one. Where are you going back to? Eden. There you go. You're going back to Eden. Back to the Garden of Eden. The spot where God walked with man, not anymore in the garden. Now, literally God walking in man. And such a intimate communion that is far beyond anything we've ever seen on earth. In fact, we won't see it on earth. We only get pictures of it in a marriage relationship. And even still, it's a tip of the iceberg. I mean, even a fingernail, like a pinky fingernail tip of the iceberg, like the one that sunk the Titanic. You can't even, I, I can't even conceive of the intimate union that we have with Jesus Christ. And that's possible here. So far as God still animates this living, breathing bag of bones that we have, we call our earthly tent, our bodies. That's why it's so important. Uh, this is off topic. Uh, God wants me to say this. You be very careful what you put on your body in a sense of words. I'm not talking about substances, like physical substances, food, drink, anything you put in your body. That's irrelevant. Your tent is your tent. It's going to fail. Don't you start claiming diseases over yourself. Mm, don't, don't you start claiming disabilities over yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't you start saying, I can't. Mm, yeah. 
you better get a holy, thus saith the Lord from heaven before you start saying, I can't. You better get direction. And that goes exactly with what you're waiting for and where are your eyes. Where you get a holy, this is what I said, and I've stopped you or I've, I've enabled you. From the Lord himself. Well, I can't seem to go forward. Have you asked your Father in heaven? Have you been on your face? Be so, have you... Have you been on your face so much so where you can't help it, break down in the street, lift your hands, where passerbys are like, dude, are you all right? And you say, with full boldness and assurance, I'm crying out to Jesus right now, and I need him so badly? Is that, that what you're longing for, what you're waiting for, where it so naturally comes out? Where it oozes out of you? Well, if not, let me challenge you. Go back to that secret closet of prayer and say, Lord, am I still hanging on to this earth that I'm speaking things about me and over me? I can't forgive that person. You better because that's what God's word says. Mm. I can't love that person. I don't care because God doesn't care. He says, love them. Because I died for them, he said. If I love them, you are to love them too because that's the Father's will. I do what I see my Father do. And I die for that person to save. And if they don't reciprocate it, not your problem. That's mine. You, you act as I did on earth. In heaven, Jesus is judge. On earth, he came to save. Different perspective. Uh, so, what are you looking for? What are you... So, dealing with this is this word, patience. Yeah, I need a little patience. If I, was a, if I had more patience, I'd be a doctor. I don't want patience. I'm not a doctor. Okay, sorry. That's a tongue-in-cheek joke. But, uh, So, what are we waiting for? Go to Romans 5. And this deals specifically with why we need patience. It's not just what are you waiting for, why are you waiting for? Why are you waiting for it? I will show you, if you hang on, this is, this is it's going to take some time in developing. So, Paul in Romans 5, who, many, who, uh, who in here has afflictions? If you don't have afflictions, I, I, God bless you. That, that means you're, you're on the mountaintop right now. Okay. I will encourage you, many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Okay. So, Romans 5, verse 2. Three, And not only that, but we also rejoice in our afflictions. Because we know that affliction produces endurance. Or, in King James, I believe it says patience. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Patience or endurance produces proven character. Proven in the sense of, um, like, okay. So, I have here a stainless steel bottle. Okay. Now... Stainless steel, for those of you who don't know much about metallurgy, is uh, for it to become stainless steel, there has to be a lot less carbon. Because, okay, iron comes from rock, iron ore, okay? And they have to take that iron ore, they, they mine it, they put the rocks in uh, a furnace, in, in, a, in a kiln, in a crucible. In fact, the Marine Corps final training day, for those of you in the military, that last test is called the crucible because it gets every bit of scum out of you. It, it, it tests you to the limit. Well, that's what, what the refiner, in the Hebrew, so far, the refiner, who is our refiner? 
God, he takes this iron ore, he puts it in a, in a, in a vessel, and, and he has to heat it. Turn, and he can't do it all at once. A little bit, and a little bit, and scoop off, and scoop off. Because otherwise, the rock left over on that crucible bowl, basically a bowl with a little drip on it, uh, that rock can actually act as an insulator. Uh, so you have to scoop it out, and you have to constantly watch it, and scoop it, and scoop it, until you get more of metal, okay? So with stainless steel, it's even more. He's got to put different alloys into it, okay? To make it stainless, which is of a hotter degree, hotter iron and hotter still. Stainless steel has to be what? Proven. It has to be tested. You got to put it through rigorous testing, okay? In a weld test, they have to, they weld it, and they have to do a bend test. They, they weld a, a, a piece of metal, and they bend it to see if it'll break. Well, patience produces proven character or substance. And proven substance or character produces hope. So let's say I get a piece of metal, it passes my test, it's as if to say, I know the skill of that welder or person or item, this is going to pass the, the test. I need a sample. So God gives you samples to see if you'll pass the test. What's the test? Go to Romans 8. Keep, keep that back in your mind. He's, Romans 5, he's saying the goal is hope. He's saying affliction leads to patience, leads to proven character, leads to hope. Hope doesn't put us to shame. Okay? Hope in what? Patience for what? Afflictions for what? Character for what? Romans 8.20 For the creation was subjected to futility. Uh, excuse me, 19. Or 18, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing. What you guys got going on, it's not worth comparing. I got a water pump issue. I'm like, okay, Lord, now what? He said, don't worry about that. Look at me. Got another dear brother. He's, he's, he's going through some, uh, uh, some legal challenges. He's, he's going through some work challenges. And he needs some prayer. I mean, he's, he's had an uphill battle. He's among some people that... Uh, in an environment that he is fighting in the faith to keep firm in his faith because he's got outside influences that really want to steal him away. And we need, we need to be praying. We have a uh, dear brother who is incarcerated. He said, I am back in discipline, uh, correctional uh, uh, solitary confinement. And he said, uh, they found weapons in my room. And I had nothing to do with it. I, sh I should have gotten rid of it, and I didn't. And now I'm stuck. And I may lose all the game time I had. And um, But God got him alone. But still, by the same token, we got afflictions. We all have afflictions. We're not to make light of the afflictions. God knows we just suffer. Do you not know, Christian, that your suffering is helpful? Here's why. It's not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation eagerly waits with anticipation for God's sons to be revealed. Do you guys know that creation is waiting? This earth and after earth is waiting for you guys to shine. All of us to shine. He says, for the creation is subjected to futility, sin, slavery. Not willingly, but because of him, him, capital H, him who subjected it. Why? He allowed it to happen. In the hope that the creation itself will also be set free from the bondage of corruption into the glorious freedom of God's children. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together with labor pains until now. And not only that, we ourselves, we're groaning. Who in here, raise your hand if you're not groaning inside you. 
pizza? He's saying, Amen, preach it. I groan. Who in here groans regarding the situation? The mandate madness, I call it. The sinful riots that are happening. The despair among people. They're afraid. They don't care about work anymore. They don't want to do anymore. They're saying, I'm tired. I give up. I just want to live my life. I have one person tell me, I don't care anymore. I just want to eat, sleep, pee, and poop. I don't care. I just want to go on with my life. God help us. I'm not trying to call anybody out, but I've heard this. I had a, 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 a dealt with a client. He said his wife left him. She said, um, I don't feel like being married anymore. I said, she said, she said, now whether it's true or not, but that was what he communicated to me. She said, you know, I don't feel like this anymore. I, I don't, I don't, I don't think I want to be married anymore. God help us. You don't care? Do you guys have, have you lost your bearing? Do you guys know why you're here? We as Christians should show people. There's a reason why you're here. There's a reason why you're here. You're not here just to live, make money, and die. You're not here just to give your kids a good education and, and, and one day send them to college. No! You're raising them for eternity. But we ourselves who have the spirit, excuse me, as the first fruits, we also groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for adoption. What? The redemption of our bodies. Christ is first in the heavenlies, in bodily form. The first one physically raised from the dead had a glorified body. First one to get a glorified body and went into heaven. Who in here has a loved one that passed away? Okay. Their bodies in the ground. Their bodies are in the ground. In the Apostles' Creed, we say, I believe in the resurrection of the dead. They have not been physically resurrected yet. Why? Because our bodies are still under the curse. Can you imagine one day, all our bones coming together, all the flesh coming together? Anybody who's been cremated, it all, just, all the dust just comes back together? That's a wild thought. And the sea will give up its dead. Everybody lost at sea. People from the Titanic. I remember hearing the story. They were singing, uh, "Near my God to Thee," and then at the la at, at the end of the uh, at the end of the singing, the the boat capsized, and they were dead within seconds, minutes, even real short. God allowed them to sing one final hymn together as a community. The sea will give up its dead. What are we waiting for? Jesus Christ. Boom! We are waiting for Him. Do you understand that the patience that God is building up in you is because He wants you to pass the test. He wants that patience to have its fulfillment. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, peace. patience, faithfulness, Gentleness. and self-control. So that patience is utterly necessary. It's not patience in and of itself. It's not for an end all. Patience is not the end of the matter. It's a means to an end. The end is Jesus Christ. You need that patience. If you have affliction, you better be patient. Patient, why? Because that means Jesus is coming soon. That means he's coming for you. If you say, you know what, I've had it, guess what? You've lost your patience and you are that stinking close to making utter shipwreck of your faith. And you're willing to compromise to have the things of this world and say, you know what, Jesus? You're not worth it. God, have mercy that it be said of any Christian. God, have mercy. Hebrews 13, 15. Y'all fired up? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, we'll go to Hebrews 13, 12. Yep. 
forgive me for yelling. I, I just, when, when Jesus gets a hold of me, I make a passionate plea. And sometimes I wonder when I go, let's face it, 100% of you are going to die. There's two things in life that are certain, death and taxes. 100% of you are going to die. And 100% of you will be before God. Whether you have bowed the knee here on earth or bowed the knee in heaven, everybody will bow. We know that. It's a fact. If you've bowed your knee here to Jesus Christ as Lord and Master, hallelujah. If you haven't, or if your family members have not, they'll call Jesus Savior but not Lord, God have mercy. He's not a crutch, so you can call him when you're in trouble. You better believe he's your master. He has right over your thinking. He has right over your life. He has right over your choices. Let's face it, he's got right over your emotions. Boom! He's got right over your emotions. When he says, son, you do not have a right to feel sad over this. Look at Ezekiel. Don't mourn your wife, Ezekiel. Whoa! You mean I can't grieve my wife? Yeah. That's what God said to him. He had no right over his emotions. And he had to, sorry, he had to keep silent. You have no right. Your choices, the greatest act of love is when you say, Jesus, I surrender my will in this matter. I give it to you. That's the greatest act of love. Why? Jesus in the garden where he said, not my will but yours be done. Not my will but yours be done. And that's why God has exalted him far above every name because he surrendered his will. He didn't want, he, he wanted to eat, he couldn't. He wanted to sleep, he couldn't. He wanted to be with friends, he couldn't. He wanted to defend himself, he couldn't. He wanted to go potty and he couldn't. He didn't want to be humiliated, but he was. Not my will, but yours be done. He didn't want to take the sin of the world, but he did it for us, for you, for me. He didn't want to bleed, but he did. Not my will, but yours be done. Do you guys understand that? Do you guys receive that? That that blood is for you? Do you guys receive how costly? Jesus is worthy of everything. And every drop of blood was for your sin. Amen. How dare we make a decision without asking him first? How dare we get offended? Don't, don't get me wrong. You can process, go through it. Say, Lord, I don't know what I'm feeling. I don't know what I'm going through. Please help me. Yes, absolutely. I'm not denying your feelings. I'm saying, walk with Jesus through it. That's what the Holy Spirit was for. To point you back to the cross. To point you back to Jesus. To get your eyes back to Him. To keep your eyes off this stinking information dump that we are seeing. Left and right. Get your eyes off the world and what they're saying. Psalm 101, 3, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. Get rid of that stinking internet subscription. Anything that is keeping you from Jesus Christ. Anything that it wants to give you knowledge of something that is irrelevant. That it, Look, you're either going to have the knowledge of the Holy One or you're going to have knowledge of useless earthly matter. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Better to lose your life here on this earth than to lose your soul. You can lose it in little things, you can lose it in big things. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Keep your mind free and clear from distractions. Focus on that which is set before you. You guys know what it is. You with families and children, focus on that. You guys got a mess in your house and you want to minister to people, you better clean up. That's right. Do you want Jesus to come into, in, into that house where... You are so focused on TV, you can't seem to get rid of that idol that is stealing your God's time, not yours. That's God's time. Let's face it, that's God's time. Are you in precious worship? Hebrews 13, 12. Therefore, Jesus also suffered outside the gate so that he might, what? Sanctify the people by his own blood. Guys, you're going through sanctification. That means a purging. It's gonna hurt. It's not supposed to feel good. It's not supposed to feel good. But it is good. Let us then, what? Go to him outside the camp. How many of you want to hear the next bit? Bearing his disgrace. 
It's enough. Somebody got their own problem. Well, it's their problem. I don't want to deal with it. Go bear his disgrace. Go bear that shame and humiliation. Let's face it. That's our call. That's our duty. That's our sacrifice. And, and here, here it shows. For we do not have an enduring city here. Sorry. You got nothing here. Just face it. Give it up. Anything you have here, thank you, Jesus. You've given me work with hands. Be thankful where you are. Oh, God, you've given me a privilege. I get to serve. I get to work. Work is a joy. I get to clean. I get to serve children. I get to love my husband, my wife. I get to try again. I get to ask God about the problems I have. Stuff with my car. I got a problem with my car. Okay? Yes, ask him. He wants to be intimate with you in those regards. Instead, we seek the one to come. Not just the one place. The author and finisher of our faith. Hebrews 11. The, well, as well as Hebrews 11, who city is built without hands. He is the maker. Hebrews 12, yes, author finisher of our faith. But a city that, is, that its maker was without hands. What's our duty here? Therefore, through him. Don't just sing songs to sing songs. Oh, it's a great day. I'm going to sing a happy song. No. Guys, happy songs. There is no amoral song. You're either going to praise him or you're not. Praise belongs to him. Satan wants to steal that praise. There is no in between, guys. Where are your thoughts? Where are your eyes? The fact that you're so concerned of him, you, you can rejoice in that because you, you love him. You want to bless him. Pray without ceasing. Yeah, you, prayer is communion. Is I want to, I, I'm talking to Jesus every day. Uh, I, not just, I mean, th that's, I'm, I'm quoting. Okay? Through him, let us continually offer up to God a sacrifice of praise. Folks, what I'm going to say now is going to kick you guys in the gut. I'm sorry, this is going to offend every single person, and I don't care if you leave and I never see you again. I'm being dead serious. That is the fruit of our lips that confess his name. Let me say that again. That is the fruit of our lips that confess his name. Leviticus 1 says, the burnt offering, the morning and evening offerings, where... You take the animal and you slay it. Why? Because you slay that animal. It's a burnt offering. The reason, the reason why you slay it is because that's what's required. Morning and evening. That, that's what the priest did. Romans 12. Folks, open those two flappers. Instead of talking gossip over others, did you hear what that person did? Why don't you say thank you, Jesus, for today? Lord Jesus, I'm going to pray for this person right now. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm about to enter into gossip. I need you to forgive me. Bless this person. Father, forgive me. Forgive him. Help him. Lord Jesus, I want to praise you right now. If, God, if you hear a song in your head or in your heart, sing it. I want to praise you, oh Lord. Um, uh, I, in fact, I'm hearing one. Praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise his name. Forevermore, for endless days, we will sing your praise. Oh Lord, oh Lord our God, sing the songs, open your lips. This is the most practical thing in the Bible that God requires from you is you open your stinking lips. It's <laughs> complaining. Go to Philippians 2. How can we be the light? Philippians 2 14. Do everything. How many things? Everything. When does it stop? Never. Never. Do everything without grumbling and arguing. Do you guys understand? Listen, I'm going to read this. Do everything without grumbling and arguing. Or complaining as the King James renders it. What, what verse is that? Uh, 2, 14, Philippians 2.14. Okay, so that you may be blameless and pure, children of God, 
who are faultless in a crooked, perverted generation, among whom you shine like stars in the world. Okay, how many of you agree we are in a, in, in a crooked and perverted generation? Amen. Okay. I wouldn't amen that. I would, I would weep. <laughs> I would weep. I'm going to break this down for you. If you remember nothing of what I said, do If you do one thing with grumbling or arguing, I'm going to break this down for you. Guess what? You're full of blame. You are defiled. Just follow me in verse 15. Forgive me for turning this, this scripture around a little bit. There's a, 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 a thought in, law, in, 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 in law, study of logic that if a statement is true, the inverse of the statement is also true. Okay? If you do anything with grumbling or arguing, just follow me in that verse, in that section, you are full, you are full of blame or you have blame, which, which opens you up to accusation of the devil. Are you pure anymore? No, you're defiled. Are you a child of God? No. Who are you a child of? Come on, I need y'all to say it and agree with God. If you're not a child of a God, who are you a child of? Now, I'm not talking about that you totally lose your salvation. I'm not dealing with that. These are momentary things. Guys, the goal is holiness, sanctification, and Jesus Christ's likeness. Amen. You look like a child of the devil. Can God work through you? Not in that moment. You are with fault. And you are among that crooked, perverted generation. Guess what you don't do now? Shine like a star in the world. May God have mercy. May God have mercy. Turn that complaining to thanksgiving. God, I got this stinking problem. And he says, really? Is it enough to rip my son off the cross? Or to say thank you? Jesus, thank you so much for this challenge. You died for it. Do you know why you guys look different? Why the Christian is supposed to look different? It's because not freedom from affliction, but joy through it. Look at Bonhoeffer. Dietrich bon- How many of you know Dietrich Bonhoeffer or know of him? He stood up against Adolf Hitler because Adolf Hitler was uh, changing the, the book of the Bible. He made himself God. He said, you must swear allegiance to God, uh, to Der Fuhrer, even above God. This is what, one of the, those instances where the state was above God, had unlimited control. They changed every area in the Bible. Um, where it says of Jew, he took it out, even of Jesus. And here's the big no-no. He changed the book of Revelation. Mm. He took pieces, piece parts out, uh, anything dealing with Jews, whatnot, he just took it out. And, and Bonhoeffer immediately went to the airwaves. And then he was, Bonhoeffer felt that it was his duty to be part of an assassination attempt, three of them against Hitler. So he ferried documents and he felt strongly that he had to stand up for righteousness sake as a pastor. And it cost him his life. Um, because uh, he, he, he sent off a lot of Jews through Switzerland. Um, he, fe- he knew about the, the final solution to the Jewish problem. Uh, you know, um, they, they eventually found out Agent of Grace. You should watch that on Redeem TV. It's free. Um, he... Uh, taught a Christian underground. He tried to get the church saying, Lord, you guys need to uh, rise up. You guys need to stand up for this. And they wouldn't. And he said, uh, he finally, uh, Heinrich Himmler, uh, you know, there was a final assassination attempt where Hitler walked away unscathed. And they found documents, um, what's the word I'm looking for, that implicated uh, Bonhoeffer's involvement. He, and, and as he was walking to the gallows, the, the, there was an eyewitness, I believe from a doctor, who said, never before have I seen a man so submitted to the will of God. And he was hanged two weeks before Hitler committed suicide. Mm. And they asked him, is this the end for you? He says, no, it's only the beginning. Amen. 
and people wondered, why are you different? How can you have so much peace in this? He says, because I serve a God where, where I'm at, this is, this is not my home. No matter, no matter what happens, I have joy through the circumstance, through the affliction. Guys, learn it now. Because guess what? When the real test comes, you will not be ready. Mm, you will not be ready. Learn it now. I am warning you, a holy warning as a watchman. Get your spiritual house in order. Amen. Get ready for the coming of Jesus. Let God have his full work in you with patience to produce character, perseverance. Don't walk away from affliction. Run into it saying, I'm going with my gun and I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight that devil who wants to put fear, complaint, accusation into me. I'm going to run into that warfare and I'm going to praise Jesus through the storm. And you will come, come out victorious in a vessel fit for the glory of God. Don't even think of going into ministry unless you are proven by the fires of God. Don't you even Amen. dare because it will be flesh will be burned. Amen. Learn to serve before you learn to be a king. Amen. In Jesus' name, Father, have your, have your work in our brothers and sisters. Do its full work in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.